How do you advise handling teaching children of different ages? What is taught together and what work is done independently by each individual student? So my high school students right now, I only have one in high school. Um, he pretty much works independently. He does. Um, we try to do all of the same subject matters. So for instance, um, American history, we will all be doing it from the pre k or all the way to my high schooler. Um, but obviously it's going to look very different. So my for my high schooler, he just gets his assignments at the beginning of the week. We sit down very, very briefly, go over it, and then he's pretty much on his own until he has a question. So um, he does a lot of his schoolwork either in um, a different room or in his room or outside if the weather allows. And we kind of just check in for minutes at the end of the day just to make sure that he did the assignments and that he doesn't have any questions. In terms of my other kids, I have a Oh, goodness, a three year old, a six year old, an eight year old and a 10 year old. So we have a wide um, we have a wide grouping of educational uh, milestones in those groups. So what we typically do is um, we typically will go over the subject altogether. So if it's American history, we cover all of it. My pre k will probably be up and out a hundred times. Um, I usually give him Play-Doh or coloring, something that he can just feel like he's a part of it and be kind of just listening and getting that audio, you know, stimulation through, through the sub, whatever subject it is we're discussing. Um, for my other kids, they just do age appropriate, um, lessons based on what we went over. For instance, uh, sticking with if it's American history or science, we'll read that, we'll talk about it. Um, and then one of them may have to write sentences. One of them may have to draw a picture. One of them may have to answer questions from a worksheet. And we kind of all sit at the table and pop around with what each person has to do. There's usually a ton of dialogue, a ton of conversation. And really, I would say, the majority of our learning happens through those moments more than it happens with just having that book in front of them. So this is our fifth year homeschooling, which I can hardly believe. And each year, or I guess every two years, we've gotten to add in a child, so to speak, to our homeschooling routine in our day. And so right now I'm teaching three children at three different ages. And I tell you what, it took a bit of an adjustment to add each one in, not just in terms of like that grade, because I've already taught that grade, but just in terms of, okay, now I'm fitting three children in and how do I do math for three children and phonics for three children um, and just figuring out our routine and our day in that. And sometimes I was really good at it and I could kind of like flow between the three and other times I'm like, I'm focusing on you. I'm focusing on you. I'm focusing on you. And what I want to say is that there's just no one right way. I think what best fits your family, sometimes I will start with my first grader and I'll say, I'm going to get you started on handwriting and I'll get him all set up on handwriting and going. And then as he's doing that, I'll move to my third grader and say, okay, you're going to start on this, you know, and I'll get him started on a subject and so on and so forth. And then there are other days where I say, okay, we are all going to sit together and we are going to do a warm up and we'll do math warm ups together. And I'll pull out flashcards and we'll play little games and I'll say, Whoever gets 30 cards wins a prize. Um, and so within that, I think there's so much flexibility, but I think the main thing is, is that it's okay if say when I pull out those math flashcards that it's over my first grader's head a little bit. I think if you just say, okay, if you get 25 cards, you get 40 cards and you get 50 cards, then we're going to do something fun at the end. Then everyone feels included and they don't feel like it's a, oh, I didn't do that or, oh, I couldn't do that. But part of homeschooling for me is that learning together and that flexibility. So I don't want to be so focused on each individual child that I forget that we're here together. And that's part of the beauty of what I get to do. Um, so I would just really encourage you to find ways in your days to do both, to focus individually on each child, whether that's taking a specific subject and saying, I'm going to sit with you during this subject and work with you, but also finding fun games and ways to say, okay, everyone up, we're going to play Simon Says, but we are going to do it with math flashcards. And then, and finding ways to incorporate that in, or one of my personal favorites is uh, finding like little like competitions that can be individualized. My boys love this. So if I say, you know, if you get one right, you're going to do, you know, mommy's going to do five jumping jacks. 
if I get it right, or if you get it wrong, you have to do five jumping jacks. And they always, they love that type of thing because they love seeing mommy have to do silly things. And so incorporating those in our days gets them giggling, it gets them wiggling and moving, but it also gets them excited about what we're learning. And I think they ultimately remember it more when they get to do those fun things. We have a very wide range of kids. So our oldest is 13 down to almost one year old, and we have nine kids in there. So even though they're close to each other, there's a wide general range. So there's no way you're going to do every single subject together when you have either a huge range or a huge amount of kids, you're not going to be able to do everything. So my 13 year old is doing algebra and my first grader is doing, you know, learning how to count his numbers. So there are some subjects you're going to have to be separated for. And Part of your goal, probably in this question of how to do multiple ages, part of your goal is probably to have the sibling relationship because you don't want them like always in separate rooms, like you in your bedroom, you're at the dining room table, because one of the goals is that they're close to each other. So one way to address the multiple ages issue is having your older ones teach the younger ones, which we do all the time. And it's helpful for me because I actually have to have the help with so many kids. I can't cover every single subject by myself, but it is also helpful for them because they are able to teach a younger sibling. They're learning patience. They're learning that little one's personality. They're learning what he likes to learn and his learning styles. And they're also learning the skill of teaching, which is a really great skill to have. And they're also reviewing mastery of that stuff that they learned when they were in third grade. So doing it that way. So for math, we use apology of math and uh, my third graders, second graders and first graders are doing that. And I have my older kids because apology doesn't have math for the older ones yet. So I have my older ones teaching the younger ones, their math class. And I do very little math with the kids. So I have um, one group of the three boys who are eight, eight and nine, we have a set of twins. So I'll have those three boys doing their math together with the older kids while I'm doing language and reading with the younger ones. Then we switch and I'll have them teach math class to the five-year-old and the four-year-old while I am doing language with the three boys that are nine, eight and eight. And so we have sort of a rotation and that's on the Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule. So that's one way to deal with multiple ages. And another way is even if they can't do the same level of work, they can study the same subjects. So for example, we use um, Apology of Science with the Young Explorers, and I will have everybody, sometimes I'll turn on the CD of Jeannie Fulbright speaking and reading the stories, and then I, they can follow along in their book. And I can have everybody studying the same thing, but some are going more in depth and some are going less. So I'll have a young notebooking journal, the lower one for like my five-year-old and six-year-old. They're mostly just coloring the pictures in it, but yet they're still coloring pictures of a dolphin when we're studying about the sea creatures and they can still look at the pages and see the pictures in the books. While my older ones are reading along, so they're getting their reading practice and they're also listening. So if they're auditory learners and the oldest, which are the 13 year old and the 12 year old, they can be in there helping to answer questions. Like if they come across a big word and don't understand what it means, or let's say the audiobook was going too fast for them to keep up with, they might lose their place. So my older ones can say, okay, here it is. Here's, here's where we are. And here's the answer to that question. So they're all in there doing the same thing, but some are going to be much more intense. Uh, math and language are going to be your two that your kids are probably going to not be together unless you have some that are uh, you know, Irish twins, I mean, you, and they are just basically working academically at the same level, that's going to be really challenging. Um, and unless you are doing a curriculum where everybody takes the the presentation and then takes their piece and does their own writing, uh, which IEW, there, there's several out there that you can do that with. Um, we did not do unit studies, but I think your math and your English are pretty much going to have to be separate. So after uh, when they were little and I needed that time with them to check for periods and capitalization and check in on their spelling, we chunked the morning after devotion time and chores. And we even had uh, something called a brain break. Um, Wonderful. Still use those. Everybody needs to use them. Um, 
And there's lots of different companies out there that provide those. And if anybody wants to reach out to me through email with my child with dyslexia, it helps her tremendously. Um, and I would definitely be a place where you, a resource where you could get some things to help. It's helped her brain a lot uh, to organize herself. So we did little brain breaks. We do scripture memory dance in the middle of the day because you've got to break up the seat, the seated work, especially if it's math or especially if it's grammar and you're writing sentences with a little boy and you're about to do this, um, just remember that it is going to get better and that they're doing what they can. Again, that goes back to your academic goals. Like, what are your goals? As a six-year-old little boy, one sentence is probably okay. And uh, it will improve. Just know that it comes with time. So do the math and English separate. Um, unless they're, unless you have kids that are just really close in age and the way that we catch up, like if I feel like, man, we just, you know, Gabe and I had talked about who was their goal. Well, we really didn't get to six sentences this year. Maybe that was a little lofty on my part, but did we get to four and are they good quality sentences for my youngest? If they're not, and we're not there, how do we catch up? I am not one to say that just because we finished a book. I'm just going to go ahead and preach this to you. A book really doesn't mean anything. A curriculum is great and it guides your learning. But I'm going to go back. If you and your husband are not on the same track with where your kids are spiritually, academically, emotionally, mentally, a curriculum can help you get there, especially for our dyslexic child. I think IEW is helping her a lot. And we switched spelling curriculums this year to help her and it's helped and we're seeing victory. And I love seeing that look on her face. That's what you homeschool for. It's not about completing the books. I'm going to say that again, unless you're in high school and you've got to take the test and it has to be done. It's not about completing the books. That is not what makes us a whole person. 